We are officially halfway through the Home Assistant release year with 2025.6 landing today. And this month brings even more visualizations, new automatic dashboard features, sidebar improvements, and more dynamic media player groups. First up though, Bluetooth is getting a nice visual overhaul in this release to help see which devices are connected via Bluetooth and if they are connected directly or through a Bluetooth proxy. So a few releases back in February, there was a new Bluetooth config panel, which allowed you to go into the Bluetooth integration or into a Bluetooth proxy and view a table of all of the connected devices. However, this release levels that up by adding a nice visual graph showing you all of the Bluetooth devices and their paths. To find this, you can head over into settings, devices, click on the Bluetooth integration and then click on configure. Finally, hit the visualization button to view the new graph. Here you can see things like your home assistant server, any Bluetooth USB adapters, Bluetooth proxies and connected end devices. You can also see devices that are in range but have not yet been added through an integration. Overall, a very useful tool for seeing how things connect to each other and for troubleshooting devices. If you use ZHA for Zigbee, you will also be familiar with this type of graph and ZHA also gets an update in this release to its graph to make it the same style as the new Bluetooth one for consistency throughout the UI. Next, there are some other nice UI improvements in this release too, starting with the automatic dashboard. Back in April, there was a new experimental automatically generated dashboard that was based on areas, which was a huge improvement over the old automatic dashboard. It allowed you to set up a dashboard based on areas and then further grouped by device types in just a couple of seconds and is based on the modern tile card. This release further expands this a little, firstly by adding a new actions section to an area which will automatically add any scripts, scenes or automations that you might have to an area, assuming you assign them to that area and then let you toggle them from a dashboard. This release will also add any numbers, buttons, counters or timers to the other section for quicker and easier controls. And finally, the entertainment section has now been renamed to media players in this release to make it more obvious that it is for media player entities. Another UI change is over on the sidebar. Now, a little known feature here if you are a beginner is that if you long press the Home Assistant text up in the top left hand corner, you can actually reorder or remove items from the sidebar to clean up or order according to your preference. When you do this, the sidebar will kind of bring up a wiggle animation to let you reorder or remove items. But now in this release, this has been replaced by a new, much cleaner pop-up menu to let you drag and drop things around or click the eye symbol to show or hide items. An additional really nice benefit here is that in previous releases, changing the sidebar would have to be done on every device that you use. So you'd have to change it on your desktop and then also change it on your mobile app to have them be the same experience. So since it was only applied to a single device. However, in this release, they are now stored on your user profile. So you just need to change it on one device and then any other, any other device that you are logged into will now show the same sidebar. Nice. The next UI improvement comes to media players. So you may or may have not known this, but if you have speakers set up in a group, like for multi-room audio, you can actually dynamically add and also remove speakers to and from the group. However, this was usually done via the join and unjoin action and might not have been obvious to everyone how to use it. But now in 2025.6, you can actually join and remove speakers from a group now using the UI. If you bring up the more info dialogue on a media player group that is on your dashboard, you will see this new join button, which will let you add or remove speakers as needed to the group. Next, in the last release, the team added a new entity picker that was cleaner, 
nicer looking and easier to use. And you would see this, for example, when you were selecting an entity to add to a card. In this release, it's now been further expanded by improving how the search works to make finding the entity that you are looking for even faster. This improved search also comes to areas, categories, floors, labels, users and device pickers in this release too. You also see that the device picker also includes manufacturer logos, which is a really nice little touch. Last UI change for this release is that you can now reset entity IDs if they have been renamed at some point, and there are two places where you can do this. Firstly, on an individual entity ID level, if you go in and find an entity, then hit the cog, and then you will notice there is now a little reset button on the entity ID, which if you press it, it will revert the name back to the original. If you have renamed all of the entities in a device, you can also head into the device itself, hit the three dots in the top right hand corner and hit reset, which will reset all of the entities to their original names associated with that device. As for the little things this month, firstly, the Matter integration now supports a pump device type. There is a new event entity that shows you the result of the last backup. There is now support for updating ESB home devices that are in deep sleep. The SmartThings integration includes a bunch of big improvements. The SwitchBot integration now has support for vacuums, but also the new Lock Ultra and the Lock Lite. And finally, the Shelly integration will now use sub devices for multi-channel devices like relays. In terms of new integrations, we have five new integrations in this release, including Amazon devices, which allows you to control Amazon Echo Dot or Fire TV devices with this native integration. There's also the new image integration, which is a self-hosted photo and video backup solution, which is really neat. And as for breaking changes or backwards incompatible changes, there is just a single entry in the list this month, but actually there is two breaking changes to be aware of. The major one, which gets its own section in the release notes, is that as of this release, they are deprecating both the core and supervised installation methods as officially supported install methods, leaving you with Home Assistant OS and Home Assistant Container as the main install methods. If you are using Home Assistant OS or running in Docker, as the vast majority of you are anyways, then you do not need to worry about this. It does not affect you in any way. However, if you are running a core or supervised install method, then as of this release, you have six months to migrate to a supported installation method. And that's about it for this release. A really nice quality of life release with lots of little features to enjoy. I really, really love the new Bluetooth visualization as like six months ago, for example, there was no real way to view what was happening with Bluetooth proxies. So it was often confusing for people to know if it was even working or not. And now we have all of these super cool tools to make it very easy to see what's happening, which is great. Oh, and completely unrelated to this release, although it is the reason why this release is a week later than normal actually, but Home, uh, Open Home Foundation and Nabucasa had a really cool summit last week in Dublin, kind of a big meetup for everyone who works there since everyone is usually remote and they actually invited me to hang out with them for a week, talk about Home Assistant, do some activities, chill out, and we actually had a big meetup one night with the community, so you guys, which was really awesome. I got to meet a bunch of you and we just talked about Smart Home, had some food and drinks and take pictures. And it was super cool to just meet so many people that I've talked with for years online, but never met in person. So thank you OHF for inviting me out to your event to tag along. Do let me know your favorite new feature in from this release down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Drop this video a like and get subscribed and I will see you in the next video. Mm-hmm. <laughs>